I use the Elgato Stream Deck constantly for my streams and video editing. If you want to pick one up from my amazing sponsor, Elgato, head to the link down in the description below. Greetings, Wiki fans! Michael here, and last week we got a brand new trailer for Pokemon Sword and Shield. And this one, well, it kinda stunk. Okay, not everyone thought it was bad, but I personally was disappointed by it, and I know others feel the same because my tweet about it got quite a few likes. But since it was a sizable Sword and Shield trailer, I am going to be doing one of my typical trailer analyses for it. But in addition to analyzing the new information, I'm also going to be going over why I and many others were disappointed to help those of you who thought it was good understand why we thought it was bad. But before I dive into the new trailer, there was quite a bit of new Sword and Shield information that happened and was revealed between my last trailer analysis and now. I just haven't covered it in a video yet because it was a lot of little info bits spread out over the course of many weeks. So I figured now was a good time to discuss that information because it's a Sword and Shield new info analysis video. The first big reveal was Surfetched, the regional evolution for Farfetched. It is the wild duck Pokemon, pure fighting type, 2 foot 7, and a whopping 257.9 pounds. This is some beefy duck. Well, okay, it's not beefy, it's, it's duck, but you get it. And has the ability Steadfast. It is exclusive to Pokemon Sword. Farfetch'd in the Galar region can reach this form after surviving many battles. Surfetch'd are very noble and fight honorably, so honorably that they're often depicted in art. Apparently there's a famous painting of a Surfetch'd fighting in a Scavalier. Which sounds super dope. I really hope that shows up in the game. It wields a strong leak like a lance, and the leak is its most treasured possession. In fact, when it withers or breaks, Surfetch'd will retire from battling forever. Its signature move is Meteor Assault, which involves Surfetch'd doing an epic charge that makes the target explode. Surfetch'd can't move on the following turn though, so it seems to be a physical fighting type version of Hyper Beam and the other recharge moves. I already mentioned this in my Ranking Every Bird Pokemon video, but I love Surfetch'd. Like, we finally got a Farfetch'd evolution after all these years, that is incredible. Also a little brag here, of my three videos from earlier this year about things I wanted to see in Sword and Shield, every single one has had one thing so far actually make it into the games. A Galarian Weezing, a Farfetch'd Evolution, and a Pokemon with a randomly generated color scheme slash combination. Next up was the Glimwood Tangle livestream, which showed Impidimp in great detail, yet we still don't have an official reveal for it. What the heck, Pokemon? Why the Impidimp snubbing? It just wants to be loved and known! But it also revealed Galarian Ponyta. It is the Unique Horn Pokemon. Unique Horn. Unicorn. Haha, <laughs> get it? Haha. <laughs> Pure Psychic type, 2 foot 7, 52.9 pounds, and has either Runaway or the new ability Pastel Veil as its ability. This ability prevents all Pokemon on that side of the field from being poisoned, and will even cure poison if a Pokemon already had it. Also, if you're one of the many people who thinks it's weird that it's a Psychic type and not a Fairy type, the reasoning for that is because unicorns are known for healing and curing poison and stuff like that. So it makes sense for Galarian Ponyta to have a typing that is strong against psychic type, not weak to it. This change was brought about by Ponyta being exposed to the life energy of Glimwood Tangle over many generations, and they have been found there since ancient times. They can now absorb that energy and store it in their manes, which makes the manes more colorful and even glow if there's enough energy. I love Galarian Ponyta. I think it's super cute, and it has me really hopeful that we're gonna get an amazing Pegasus Psychic Flying Galarian Rapidash, which is something that I said I've wanted, a Pegasus Pokemon. I'm honestly starting to lean more towards Shield because of Galarian Ponyta. All right, now that I've covered all the stuff from the last few weeks, let's talk about the newest trailer. This trailer exclusively revealed new Gigantamax forms, the first of these revealed since the feature was first announced. In case you need a refresher, Gigantamax functions the same as Dynamax, where the Pokemon gets super huge for three turns during battle, but their appearance actually changes, and they gain access to an exclusive G-Max move. Only certain species are capable of Gigantamax, and only specific individuals within that species are able to do it. The only ones we knew about prior to this trailer were Gigantamax Dreadnought, Corviknight, and Alcremie. 
This new trailer revealed five more, the first of which is Gigantamax Pikachu, or as the fandom has been calling it, Chonkachu. It seems to be inspired by older art of Pikachu, where it was much rounder and had a longer tail. Gigantamax Pikachu retains its ability static, since I doubt you can find a Gigantamax capable Pikachu with lightning rod, and is 68 feet 11 inches tall. The electricity its cheeks generate is stored in its tail, and if it strikes an opponent with said tail, it will jolt them with a shock as strong as a lightning strike. It now generates so much electricity that it rivals entire power plants, but it's not practical to use it to power homes, since it can only stay in this form for a short time. Its exclusive move is G-Max Volt Crash, which all of Pikachu's electric type attacks become. This attack not only does damage to one opponent, but also paralyzes all opponents, even ground type ones. You can obtain a Pikachu capable of Gigantamaxing if your Switch has play records for Let's Go Pikachu. So, therefore, it is not hard to infer that the next Gigantamax form revealed was Gigantamax Eevee. Gigantamax Eevee looks mostly like a regular Eevee, but with much fluffier neck fur, bigger ears, and a bigger tail. It stays a normal type, keeps either runaway or adaptability as its ability, and is 59 feet 1 inch tall. The fur on its neck is so fluffy and luxurious that any opponent caught in it loses the will to fight due to being enamored with Eevee. This form also makes Eevee a lot more hyper and playful, but due to its size, it often ends up crushing its opponents. Okay, alright, that's kind of a morbid thing for a very cute Pokemon to do. Gigantamax Eevee's normal type moves become G-Max Cuddle, which does damage and causes opposite gender foes to become infatuated. Like with Pikachu, you can get it if your Switch has play data for Let's Go Eevee. I'm going to go a little bit out of order for this trailer and next to discuss Gigantamax Meowth. It becomes long and skinny, gets glowing eyes, and has a symbol on its coin, which seems to be Japanese kanji for large. It remains a normal type, keeps either pickup or technician, and is 108 feet 3 inches tall. Fun fact, this height means that Gigantamax Meowth takes Gigantamax All Creamy's crown for the tallest Pokemon form of all of them. At least, as of now. Its coin emits powerful Gigantamax energy, and like before, it still loves shiny objects. However, since it is so large, those shiny objects end up being skyscrapers, which it will sharpen its claws on, therefore causing damage such as breaking windows. Could you imagine just like sitting at your desk, working in your office during the workday, and then suddenly some dumb trainer down on the street below decides to Gigantamax his Meowth and it starts just clawing at your office window, shattering glass everywhere? Like, oh my god, they would have to definitely outlaw Gigantamax Meowth in cities. Actually, they should probably outlaw just all Dynamax in the cities. All of Gigantamax Meowth's normal type moves become G-Max Gold Rush, which does damage, causes confusion, and scatters money for extra prize money after the battle, likely more than what Payday would give. Gigantamax Meowth will be obtainable from Mystery Gift from release date to January 15th, 2020, referred to as an early purchase bonus. Also, now that I've covered Gigantamax, Pikachu, Eevee, and Meowth, I can mention that for all three of them, Gigantamax-capable individuals are incapable of evolving. It's not currently clear whether they'll get a base stat boost like with partner Pikachu and Eevee in the Let's Go games, but if they don't get that stat boost, then I don't foresee many people using these for very long. Also, Gigantamax, Pikachu, and Meowth were mentioned in the leak from many months ago, so that is further confirmed. But anyways, back to the original order of the trailer. Next was Gigantamax Charizard. Its body pattern changes a bit, and its horns light on fire. Its wings may seem like they're on fire, but apparently they're actually made of fire, and it can shoot them off as an attack. It remains fire flying type, keeps blaze, and is 91 feet 10 inches tall. The flames inside its body have grown much stronger, hence them overflowing on its tail, horns, mouth, and wings. Its fire type moves become G-Max Wildfire, which will do damage and deal damage for the four following turns to any opponent that is not a fire type. Guys, I, I have a confession to make. Ugh, this thing is just so cool. Like, why did another Charizard form have to be so awesome? Ugh. And finally was Gigantamax Butterfree. It gets longer antenna, a cloud-shaped segment on its back, and massive different colored wings. It remains bug flying type, 
keeps compound eyes, and is 55 feet 9 inches tall. Its wings actually emit a super bright light, which is due to the status inflicting scales on them. It uses these as its primary combat weapons, along with the incredibly powerful winds it can create, which are strong enough to lift a 10-ton truck. Its bug-type moves become G-Max Befuddle, which does damage and leaves all opponents poisoned, paralyzed, or asleep, randomly selecting from the three options. So that covers all the new information from this trailer, so now I can get into why myself and many others were disappointed by it. One common criticism that you may have heard is that they're giving too much special attention to Generation 1. After all, the entire trailer was just new forms for Gen 1 Pokemon. For me, that's part of it. I personally don't have any problem with Gen 1 Pokemon getting some extra attention if that Pokemon is one that's never gotten any special treatment before. I wasn't bothered and was actually very excited by Galarian Weezing, Surfetched, and Galarian Ponyta because Weezing, Farfetched, and Ponyta are Pokemon that have never gotten a new evolution, a new Mega Evolution, an Alola Former, any other special treatment like that in the past. But that's not the case with the majority of the Pokemon focused on in this trailer. Butterfree has never gotten anything special, so that one's fine, but the other four have gotten some kind of special treatment relatively recently. Pikachu got an alternate evolution in Alolan Raichu and got its own game in Let's Go Pikachu. Plus, it's Pikachu. It's always getting special attention. Eevee has gotten many new evolutions, one as recent as Generation 6, and also got its own game in Let's Go Eevee. Meowth got an Alola form in Generation 7, and Charizard got not one, but two Mega Evolutions in Gen 6. These are not underappreciated Pokemon. These are heavily focused on Pokemon getting more new forms, potentially at the expense of more deserving Pokemon. The reason people are saying that Gen 1 is getting too much special attention isn't because Gen 1 Pokemon are getting new forms. Like I said, not really anyone was bothered by Galarian Ponyta, Surfetched, or Galarian Weezing. It's because in this trailer specifically, there was just such a high concentration of Gen 1, with all five of them being Kanto Pokemon, and four of the five being the super famous Gen 1 Pokemon that have already gotten special treatment. If these reveals had been spread out over the course of many trailers, or were only showing up in the final release, then I have a good feeling people would have been less disappointed by it. Also, some are challenging this criticism by saying that we already knew that three of the five were coming. Pikachu and Meowth were mentioned in the confirmed leak, and we had a heavy suspicions that Charizard was going to get some kind of new form because it's Leon's main Pokemon. My rebuttal to that criticism is that, again, the high concentration of it just being all of these at once is what played the heaviest role. Plus, I personally still think that Leon's signature Pokemon should not have been Charizard. I get that Gigantamax Charizard existing means that it's technically a new Pokemon, basically, like Diantha with Gardevoir and Mega Gardevoir, but I personally would have thought it was cooler if his signature Pokemon was a totally new species, like Steven with Metagross or Cynthia with Garchomp. But of course, even though I didn't really like this trailer or these reveals, I'm still going to love Sword and Shield, as will many people who feel the same as me. One not great trailer is not going to ruin the entire game, so if you did like this trailer, I'd urge you not to dismiss those of us who didn't. We're still going to play the games, and we're still going to have a great time, we just probably are not going to use Gigantamax Meowth. Thanks so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm not too far from a million subs, so you know, want to hit that before too long. And if you want to see some more of my fun Pokemon videos, I recommend this one here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all.